In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint the Clone Lord Fabius Bile. Let's get going with Fabius Bile, or as I like to call him with his little pimp stick, Fabulous Bill. Um, really lovely model. Uh, so what I've done is I've primed in black and I've sprayed quite a bit of Corax white over the top because the model's mainly uh, lighter colours. We've got his um, his backpack here and I've just sprayed that with lead belcher uh, because of all this kind of metal armatures. So I've got the little acolyte dude here as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off on Fabius Bile and I'm using Zarius Purple and I'm just going to paint um, all the armor with Zarius Purple. I'm going to be careful not to get it on any of the uh, the flesh parts of his flesh cloak there um, and if you're not sure what's purple on uh, Fabulous Bill it is the uh, check the box art but it's basically all the armour uh, and the kind of main part of the backpack as well so you may need uh, two coats when you come to some of the lighter parts but in general Zarius Purple covers quite well so work your way on the model get everything covered in Zarius Purple that needs it so all the armour and then we'll come back and uh, we'll look at um, doing some of the metallics I think with those bits of purple done we'll go on to the armour uh, the armor, the metallics next because then if we do make any uh, mistakes it's, it'll be really easy for us to tidy them up so there's quite a bit of gold on Fabia, so we just uh, we've got the shoulder guard here. So take your time, I'll just work it around using some retributor armor, just to put a nice uh, nice coat of gold on there. One coat should be enough for this. Just take your time when you get to bits you've already finished. Um, and there's quite a lot of gold in terms of armor trim. So for example, on the legs we've got. The armor trim there so you just want to really take your time and enjoy popping this gold down because it really does help make uh, the armor pop um, and you can see it is a real throwback to the the emperor's children of the of the heresy with their with their purple and gold and we've also got a lot of areas like on the the gun here where there's a lot of trim that needs to be done in gold as well so check the box art work your way all the way around get all that gold done and then we'll come back and we'll shade and highlight it next. With all that gold done you can really see it pops against the purple so it's going to take some right on flesh shade and we're going to use this just to shade the shade all the gold so work your way around the model don't let it pool anywhere I don't think there's anywhere where that's likely to happen uh, but we just want to make sure we cover all the the gold we come up against with the right on flesh shade and don't forget to do the backpack and I'm also painting the acolyte along as well at the same time because we're using a lot of the same colours so the techniques I show you in this video uh, you can use the acolyte as well. Make sure that right on flesh shade is dry and what we're going to do now is we're just going to take some liberator gold and we're going to highlight uh, everything that we've got so where we can use this the design on the model to just run your paintbrush along the edge and what you'll see there it starts to pick up that brighter gold colour. It's a really easy straightforward way of just highlighting gold. So just take your time, work your way around all the bits that you've previously painted gold covered in the right and flesh shade and then we'll come back and um, I think we'll do the we'll do this belt bit next or belt bit it's kind of like his uh, his tool belt and then we'll move on to metallics after that. That's all the gold highlighted. So next up we'll uh, get some Corax white. And we're just going to go over this uh, patch here. And make sure we cover everything. To make sure that uh, we've got a nice even uh, white coverage on it. We'll shade it down uh, next. So whilst I'm doing that. When we've got the Corax white, I also want to make sure we do all the tubes. So we've got everything coming out here, going over the shoulder, and all the vials. And I'll show you a way of getting a really effective vial without having to do too much blending 
uh, it should be quite quick. So just work your way around, make sure you've got a nice solid uh, coverage of white on all the vials. And then we'll come back and we'll start to shade uh, the tool belt there. So I've also made sure to do the, uh, the Acolyte top with that Corax white. Uh, and then once that's dry, you can see I've done all the vials. I'm just going to take a little bit of apothecary white. Not too much, a little bit of apothecary white. And I'm just going to paint it all over this uh, tool belt that Fabius has got on the side here. So I'm not painting the vials, I'm just painting the tool belt. I'm also going to paint uh, the top of the acolyte as well with the apothecary white so let that dry and we'll come back and highlight it next and once that apothecary white's dry just take a little bit of white scar and just highlight the kind of highest edges so you don't want to highlight the whole thing but where you've got the sort of clasps you can highlight them and along the bottom there as well nice and simple just catch that so there we are, that's done. I'll do the acolyte as well. Uh, I think we'll have a look at doing the silver metallics next before we go on to um, the cloak and finally the armour and the gloves. Moving on then, let's get the silver metallics done. So we am going to use iron hand steel for this and we've got quite a bit to do I guess, so just take your time. Uh, we've got the kind of control dial here. Be careful not to go over anything that you've already painted or anything that you've uh, painted Corax white in anticipation of uh, colouring up so that he gets his uh, gets his jamba juice to make him uh, a little bit irresistible in battle. We've got all the tools here so again just take your time uh, be careful not to get onto anything you've already finished with uh, with the white, you see that's gone on quite nicely. And then we've got the weapon, and we've got the casing there, which I'll do off cam because it's just, it'll be a little, little easier for me to to finish off cam. And then we've got the kind of tubing which runs around the back as well. So just take your time with all this. Make sure you've got it all covered. Um, and like I said at the start, I kind of sprayed this with lead belcher spray. Uh, but if you haven't, then you can go ahead and paint that with the iron hand steel as well. There's not too much difference in the colour. And then we'll come back and we'll uh, we'll shade it next. And then once you've kind of got all your metallics painted, I'm just going to show you on the the kind of the racks here. Just take some null oil and paint that over all the silver. You can also paint it over the purple armour as well, just to give us a little bit of a head start on the next stage uh, for that. So try not to get it on the gold, but it's fine all over the silver metallics, all over the purple armour. Same for the the main body of uh, Fabius Bile as well. And then make sure that's dried thoroughly before we come back to do any more with it. Once that null oil's dry, we're going to take some chrome from Vallejo Model Colour. What we're going to do is we're going to look to catch the edges of everything and work our way around the model. So just use the shape of the model and work your way around. Take your time. You don't want to make too many mistakes here, especially with bits you may have already finished. So just use the edges. Nice and simple. And make sure you get all the uh, all the silver that you may you may have painted. Um, and when it comes to the uh, the backpack itself, obviously there's a lot more, but just take your time, work your way around and just use those edges like that and you'll get a, a nice effective highlight that will really brighten up the metals on there. Okay. Once all that chrome is dry, we're going to start to bring this purple armour uh, back to life and kind of highlight it. So you sh if you haven't already, Make sure you shade it with some null oil. Um, and then what I'm going to do is we're just going to use that Zarya's purple again just to kind of highlight back in 
where the null noil has left it a bit darker, just like that. And take your time with this, because again, you don't want to spoil anything you've already finished. That was a bit of a slip. Luckily, I didn't catch anything. Um, you can see there, that it kind of works quite nicely with the darker purple underneath. So just work your way around and highlight back up all the purple that you've uh, you've shaded with null oil, and we'll come back and we'll give it a highlight. So that should have been a really nice, easy step. We're going to highlight that purple now with some Jean Sealer Purple. Uh, where we can, we want to catch the shape of the model a little bit. So I'm just going to pull it down there. Where well, you've got some sharp edges just on the leg there. You can move it round on the back here on the collar of the armour. Just like that, nice and easy. Um, if we have a look at the backpack for example again we just want to use the shape of the model just to pull the brush along and it gives us that nice subtle highlight so work your way around all the purple get it highlighted and then we'll come back we'll just add one little more kind of extreme highlight right on the, the kind of the sharpest edges and then that's the armor done and then for the sharpest edges, we want to take a little bit of slanesh grey. So this is kind of a a purpley grey colour. So you want to make this kind of a really thin line when you apply it to the model. And you just really want to put it on the kind of the, the sharpest edges. Because this will just kind of set up quite nicely. Where you've got the the sharp edges on the on the backpack, again you can just move the the paintbrush along, and make sure it catches them. Okay, so work your way around the rest of the model, get that slanesh grey on there, and then that's the armor done. We'll come back and I think we'll do the uh, flesh coat next. So we'll base the coat, the shoulder pad, all a little bit in in Cadian flesh tone. So. Again, you know you watch me doing this uh, too much, but it's going to give it a nice even covering. You may need uh, two coats. Make sure you get into the joins there as well. So just work your way all the way around the model, two coats, and get a nice even coverage on all these fleshy areas. And straight away you can see the colours are starting to tie back together. It's starting to come along, look really, really good. So next time we're together, we'll have a nice even coat all over that flesh. Okay, let's shade all this uh, Cadian flesh tone. Now, normally if we were doing a face, we'd use some right and flesh shade, but I'm actually going to use Gilman Flesh Contrast Paint. So if we look at the, the, the box art, there, there's quite a, a bit of uh, contrast shading, etc. going along the skin. So we're going to use this, and all we're going to do is we're just going to pop it. Uh, I'll show you on the back here, all over this Cadian flesh tone. So what we want to do is we want to stop it kind of pooling too much. We want to make sure that we haven't got any breaks, so don't kind of do it a little bit, let it dry. So just keep going the same direction. And then we let this dry, and then we'll come back and we'll highlight it all back up. So that we've got some of those really nice... Uh, transitions and we've also got the different kind of colors in it as well you see there I put a little bit too much on and that's fine so all I'm going to do is I'm going to clean my brush off and I'm just going to push it all down to the bottom and there we are most of it will come away like that okay we want to avoid it pooling in areas like that too much okay so work your way all the way around the model and then we'll come back and uh, we should be good to go once that Reichlin flesh shade is dry, we're going to go back in, not Reichlin flesh shade, sorry, the Gilliman flesh contrast. We're going to go back in with some Cadian flesh tone. Now it's important that we haven't got too much on our brush for this, but what we're going to do is we're just going to try and bring that Cadian flesh tone towards the kind of the raised areas. We want to leave that Gulliman flesh in some of the recesses like this. So just take your time, work your way around. 
um, and where you need to put a second coat on the Cadian flesh tone feel free where you've got areas like this where you've got a little bit of a blotch there that's okay what we'll do is make sure you haven't got too much Cadian flesh tone on your brush and we'll just kind of pull away from it there look and that'll as it dries start to kind of blend in a little so there we are work your way around the model get all that Cadian flesh tone highlighted back up and then when we come back we'll just give it a, a kind of a final popping highlight so next up we want to highlight with a little bit of Kislev flesh just to give a, a bit of pop so what we're looking for is all the folds and all the creases we want to pull along the edge as well and also where we've got the different parts meeting we're just going to highlight along there as well so this is fairly straightforward uh, but is uh, quite effective in, in getting a, a nice kind of or as nice as you possibly can effect on someone who's got flayed flesh for a, for a cloak so what we're going to do is going to do this all over uh, the model you can see I've kind of finished it on the shoulder pad there ahead of time and around the back and it really does kind of just add that extra dimension and then we'll come back with that a little bit more and then I think we'll move on to the uh, move on to the face next so that skin's starting to look really really nice so uh, last thing we're going to do is just give it the most prominent areas a little bit of flayed one flesh just to really kind of emphasize the light reflecting off a fairly kind of luminescent texture like skin so work your way around the model find those areas uh, where you want it I'll go back and kind of finish it but while I've got the flayed one flesh out uh, I'm going to give the head a coat and you can see there it covers okay but we probably want to give it two uh, coats of flayed one flesh and the reason I'm using flayed one flesh is because it differentiates Bile's head face from um, the kind of the rest of the skin that we've got on him and that's really important that we were able to make that differentiation okay so I'm going to finish this off and then we'll come back and we'll uh, start to shade and highlight and don't forget to just get those sharpest edges with the, the flayed one flesh as well just like that okay once you've got that flayed one flesh we're just going to take some right and flesh shade and wash this all over the face and if you've got too much just clean your brush and move it around we just want to keep it on that flayed one flesh that we've kind of put on there we don't want it sneaking onto the other kind of fleshy areas because that'll just darken them back down again and we spent a bit of time highlighting them up so let's get them just get it in there around the, the face okay so let that dry we'll come back and we'll highlight it next so once the right lens flesh shade is dry we're going to go back in with the flayed one flesh and this is just picking out all the kind of raised areas being careful not to kind of go over the recesses where we've got that right and fleshy gathering so you can see that it's really straightforward it's not too much effort involved at all just that starts to add a little bit of definition to to Bile's face so we'll let that dry, we'll come back, put a little uh, highlight on it, and then that's the face done. Just before we highlight, I'll put the last highlight on the face. Um, for the acolyte, the skin, I've done it the same colour as the uh, the flesh on uh, Fabius's cloak, although I've not bothered washing it, I've just highlighted up and it kind of just gives you that kind of much lighter colour. So, last for uh, Fabius's face, we've got some pallid witch flesh. Now we don't want too much of this at all, we just want to 
put this on the areas that just kind of project the most, so the kind of the brows, the cheekbone, the furrow there, just like that, a little bit on the chin, and that just gives us that last highlight, which kind of gives him a nice uh, kind of washed up look on his skin as his uh, clone body number whatever this may be isn't the healthiest okay so you can go in and do the eyes as well if you're feeling confident otherwise this is looking pretty good we'll do the hair next then we'll do the gloves um oh and while we're there actually i might just pop, pop some pilot witch flesh on this head that he's um got on his waist so it's gonna need a couple of coats on there but we'll just pop it around there build that up and we'll just put a tiny bit of right glove flesh shade on it as well um, and highlighted it back with the pallid witch flesh just to give it a kind of gaunt look of a, of a head that's been decapitated. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to base the hair with some Othwan grey. So just want to be careful that we don't go over anything that we've already finished. And as usual there's not a huge amount for you to see while I base coat this so I'll just show you to get the gist of it and then we'll or I rather we'll go and finish the rest of this off cam then we'll come back we'll shade it and highlight it and I'm also going to do this hair on the severed head the same make sure I cover up any mistakes that I've made earlier on so we are finished that off cam, we'll come back and we'll shade it next. For shading the hair, I'm just going to go back to the old uh, apothecary white that we used earlier. All we're doing with this, we're just going to paint this all over uh, Bile's hair. Once again, being careful not to get it over anything we've already finished. And we got this hair down here as well, so we'll paint that and we let that dry we'll come back and highlight it shortly and then once that's dry we're just going to take some white scar and paint this along the kind of most pronounced bits of hair just to get that effect whilst leaving the uh, apothecary white in the recesses and then when we come around to the back here uh, we just want to paint the top bits really because obviously the rest of it is going to disappear in to the armour see I've caught a little bit there I'll just go and repair that off cam and then we've got this hair here as well which is fairly straightforward to do so there we are that was really easy um, we're not too far off finishing now, so we've got the gloves to do and all the kind of black bits, so I'll do them next. Uh, and then we've got all the vials, I'm going to show you a really easy way to do the vials and make them look really effective. Without blending, we just can use contrast paints. So we're going to take some of Bad and Black and we're going to paint in some of the pipes. So if you're not sure which ones to do, have a look at the box art. Um, and all we're doing is just taking our time because obviously we've finished quite a bit of the model now, so the last thing we want to do is make uh, make any mistakes. So we've got this tube coming down here. We've also got this cord, which Bile's using to hold his skin cloak together. So I'll go and finish the rest of that off cam because it'll just be a little bit easier uh, to do it off camera. We've got the uh, cane as well, so just be careful around the gold that you've finished. Just take your time. Work your way around that. Uh, and also then on the, on the backpack we've got a lot of cables like this. Just You can paint them black, work your way around. Again, follow the box art. You can use them silver if you want, but I just think they look a little bit more uh, effective if they've kind of got that casing on them. 
and it also kind of breaks up the sheer amount of silver that's on this backpack as well so take your time pick which ones you want to do and then get them done come back and we'll, we'll highlight that black next to highlight the black you can use a little bit of mechanicus standard gray and like when highlighting anything where we're able to we want to use the the shape of the model just to pull that highlight over the same with the bits of cord that kind of run along here and then obviously going down there as well you see I've made a little mistake there it's not an issue clean your brush and make sure you get back in there quick enough got most of it off but just pop a little bit of Cadian flesh tone back over it and then back to the mechanic is standard grey so we're just looking on the kind of the fingers here just catching the edges so we can draw that line down the hand just like that and we want to do that all over the model wherever we've got that a uh, bit of black so get on and get that highlight done and then uh, when we come back we're pretty much done so we've got the vials to do and we need to highlight to them his cane so we're going to pull a bit of mechanica standard gray down the middle there uh, but i'm actually gonna there's lots of indentations on it i'm gonna put some corax white in there um so finish the black, go away, tidy all the vials, get it in Corax White, and we'll put some Corax White into the into the indentations of the cane, and then we'll come back and get to work on them. So just quickly, if you haven't already, this kind of little brain thing that you've got in the back of the backpack, get that white as well. And then I thought I'd just quickly show you what I meant by running the Corax White uh, into the kind of the indentations in the cane. Just a nice tip on the brush. Just going to run it down like that. If you spill across the edge, don't worry too much um, because when I show you what I'm going to do, basically, when I get that glowing without actually having to worry too much about kind of highlighting and blending. And we can always go back in with a bit of uh, a bad and black if you think that that will be beneficial. But that'll dry nice. And then we've just got this piece around the bottom. Which we can fill in. Okay, it looks a bit messy now, but don't worry. All will be revealed very soon and uh, it'll look quite cool quite effective so make sure all these pipes you've got them covered in white as well all your vials are white and then next up we'll uh, we'll get them done to get all these looking really cool the first thing we're going to do is take some ethematic blue contrast paint we're going to paint all the tubing that we've got white and you see straight away it's starting to mimic the kind of the box art It's really nice way of getting an effect there. That brush is probably a bit too big, so I'm going to swap to a smaller one. And also make sure you don't have too much on your brush. Okay, so you can see straight away that's looking really nice and really mimics that box art quite nicely. The next thing we want to do is all these vials, we want to get the ethematic blue into all the vials. So I'll just show you on the, the gun here, but Make sure you do all the ones on the backpack as well. If you're not sure which ones, just check the box art. But get that ethematic blue on there uh, and let that dry. And we've got these ones here as well. And what you see is as, as you pop it on there, it starts to kind of pull away to the edges. So you're left with that Corax white and it gives you uh, basically a free glow. So you're getting a really effective look on the model without worrying too much about having to put the white back on for the glow. And similarly, we're going to use that on this cane. We're going to cover the entirety of the cane that we painted black uh, with the ethermatic blue. 
and what we start to see is what you see there so you get that glow on the cane as well and we don't have to worry about highlighting if you think oh, a bit too much white you can just put some a bad and black on but otherwise it, it's a really simple way of getting that kind of power source so on the backpack we're going to do these here these ones here we're going to do red so let's so on the backpack we're just doing these ones you can see how easy this is so just fill them in let it dry and we'll come back and uh, I'll show you the next step what you can do while that's drying is you can just take a little bit more of the ethermatic blue and just move it to kind of like the bottom like you see there because what we're going to do is we're going to kind of give the illusion that these tanks are a little bit empty so you just want to make sure you've got enough in there and I'll show you how to create that illusion next but that's just paint them like that's a really good start so if you look at the model on the box you can see that these are not full and they're a little empty so what we're going to do is take some McKellian green contrast paint and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a line there and I'm going to just paint up the top of it. So you can see there now it looks like that vial is empty or emptying. I just want to make sure we've got a decent coverage in there. So if you need to put a second coat in to get that, that's fine. And then with this one we're going to draw that line a little higher just there so it looks like there's a bit more in there okay so take your time doing this it's really fiddly but actually it's really worth it and it really does give you the same effect that you get on the box art but with much uh, less effort in terms of the kind of colors that you need to pull together and blend and make sure you do it all the way around and then as for the the kind of the weapon if you imagine that the flat level is going to be kind of going at that angle so it's entirely up to you if you want to do it on the web and I'm going to I'm just I'm just being mindful that if I put a line there it's not going to be realistic so I'm going to pull the line kind of maybe there and I want that line to be parallel with the base so it's going to fill that in and then we'll uh, we'll come back once it's all done and I'll show you how to highlight it so it looks like it's glistening glass while that Achillean green dries, we're going to paint these vials with uh, Blood Angel's red contrast paint. So exactly the way that we did just now with the uh, ethermatic blue, we just want to paint these with Blood Angel's red. So it's a nice, oops, careful because he's quite fragile, more fragile than I thought <laughs> by leaning on it. So get those done and we'll come back and uh, we'll have a look at how we do the same thing using uh, Flesh Terrors Red. And then for the red syringe, I'm just going to take some Flesh Terrors Red contrast paint. And again, like the, on the weapon, we've probably got a, a line that kind of goes around to make sure that it, the liquid finds its uh, finds its level. You see there, it just adds a bit of darkness on there, and we'll do the kind of the highlighting will be exactly the same as I'm about to show you on the the other the kind of the blue vials. And just a point at this uh, stage, I, I am painting the acolyte at the same time as well, and I'm using all the same kind of techniques on the acolyte that I've used um, on the model. I've painted black around there. And I've made this dark green so it's a dark angel that he's uh, extracting the gene seed from okay so can make sure you do that along the way as well uh, and once everything's dry I'll come back I'll show you how to do those vials so that's the effect we're looking for on the vials to make them look like they're glass so I'll just show you on the weapon how to do it so just take some white scar you don't want too much just a little bit on your brush and you want a, you want a good point it's probably not quite pointy enough and then what we want to do is just want to paint along the here so a thin white line along that liquid level make sure you paint it on the the ethermatic blue side because that gives you uh, 
kind of an easier job. And then what we want to do is we want to just build some a couple of things really. So you want to build some reflection into the glass. So again, just with some white scar. Good point on your brush. I'm just going to paint a line. Try and paint a straight line down the glass like that. And then another one in here. And if you want, you can put another one here as well. So there we are. That's what kind of gives you that glass look. And you can also then pop maybe a few bubbles into the liquid. And all I'm doing is just tipping the, the white scar against that ethermatic blue. And that's it done. So you've got some really effective glass vials using just, you know, three colours there. So you don't have to blend anything, but I think they look really good. So we're going to put it all together, base him to match the rest of your army. I'm going to finish off a few bits of the Acolyte, and then Fabius Bile is done. So there we have it. Fabius Bile is done, and he's ready to scour the battlefields for Gene Seed. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave a like and a comment down below. It really does help me improve the content of the channel for all of you guys. Don't forget, you can see all my recommended equipment in the description. There's also a link for Goblin Gaming, where you can get up to 20% off all Games Workshop and all Wargaming stuff. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.